Hi, Darren Lyle here. Well, today I thought I'd work on this cash register that's going to be part of a larger scene that I'm working on. So we're going to begin from scratch, from the very beginning, doing all the modeling for the object, and then we're going to use the EV renderer in Blender 2.8 to set up the materials. We're going to do some UV mapping, add a few textures, and then once again we'll use the EV renderer to add some lights and render out a final image. So join me and let's create with Blender 2.8. The first thing I like to do when I'm modeling anything really is just to bring in some sort of image, a reference image, and I'm just going to hover over here and click and drag to create a new window and then I'm going to change it to a UV image editor. And now I can go to image and open and bring in a reference image and here it is. I'm going to press control spacebar to open that up so we can see it and this is it. So I'm working on a larger scene in a convenience store and I would like to have a cash register in there. So this is what I'd like to work on. So let's give it a try. Um, I'm just going to keep this right over here and I think what I'm going to do is just select everything, hit the A key and delete and get rid of just everything. And let's begin fresh here. I'll press shift A and let's bring in a cube. And uh, I think I'm just going to begin with this part right down here. Uh, let's just hit S and Z and scale that in just a bit. And I'm going to come over here and turn on the move tools here. And I'll just bring that up, hit the period key to frame it up. And I'll go to three and five. And just so I have it kind of in or on the grid. I'm going to put it just above the grid because there's little feet here. All right, so let me tab into edit mode. I'll hit the three key and choose that face there. And I don't know, it looks kind of like maybe something like this. I can't tell if it's exactly square or not. It doesn't look like it. It looks like it's a little bit, there we go, a little bit rectangular. All right, so we have that basically blocked in. And that's all I'm doing for now. I'm just trying to get the basic shapes in place. And these may not be the final shapes, but I just want to get it kind of in here just so I can get the basic proportions of it. That's all. S and Z and scale that down. And so I'm working on the bottom part of the cash register itself right now. And once again, it has, it appears to have little feet very tiny ones, and that's fine. We just want to get it right in here. Um, it looks like this too. Well, it looks like it's maybe a little bit closer up front. And maybe if we select this face and move it back just a hair, maybe it's got some room back there at the back. It's hard to tell. I could go find another image of this. Maybe we could find one that has kind of a three-quarter view. So I've just gone to Google Images, and it looks like this one's pretty good, and it's got a three-quarter view, so that could be helpful. Let's go ahead and grab that. I'll save image as, and I'll put it in my reference folder there and save it. All right, let's go back to Blender now. Here in Blender, I'll go ahead and create another window right here. So let's just uh, make that a little smaller grab this and move this down and we'll just do the same thing. I'll click up here to see the images. Yeah, let's grab this one and open image. All right, so now we've got a little bit more of a sense of how this is going to work. It looks to me like all of this here is going to be easier to do if it's flat, if it's in the global axes. As soon as I tilt this up, you see how it's kind of tilted, it may get a little difficult to do. So I think first of all what I'm going to do is work on this. Then after I've got this in place, I'll then tilt it up and get this whole shape here. So just a little strategery. <laughs> so let's, um, first of all, I think maybe a better tab into edit mode. And I think what we need to do is just add some edge loops here. So it looks to me like we've got um, something here. I'm looking at this edge right there. We've got uh, something down here. 
and uh, let's do two. I'll scroll the mouse wheel here, and then I'll press S and X and scale these out to maybe about here. All right, so we've got this basic shape right here. Now let's work on these individual pieces, and really it's going to be, well, it looks like we've got one kind of uh, button here and another kind of button for everything else. And um, we've got these pieces right up here, but I don't know that I care too much about those. So let's not worry about that. Actually, I think I'll just hit E and let's extrude down just a tiny bit here. All right, now we've got that. I think what I'll do is put all of this in its own collection. It, I mean, it already is, but let's go ahead and change the name of this collection to uh, Cache Register. And I'll create a new collection here, and we'll call this um, Buttons. There we go. So now in here, we can go ahead and begin creating the button. So I'm going to turn this off. And in here, I'll create a new cube here. Uh, let's work on these here, the little square ones, or square-ish, I should say. The first thing I'm going to do is just get rid of the face on the bottom. We don't need that. There we go. And then uh, I'll scale in a bit. Let's move it up. And I think for these, what we really need is a subdivision surface modifier. We can scale in the Z a bit. And I think what I'll do is maybe add an edge loop down here because we've got these little pieces kind of um, extending out on the bottom here. And it also looks like they angle in just a little bit. So maybe I'll scale this in just a little bit. Now I'll also uh, take these faces here. Let me go to face mode and alt click between those two. And I'm going to extrude these out. So I'm going to press E. Then I'll press the S key to scale, and then I'll press Shift Z to turn off the Z axis, and then I'll scale out just a little bit like this. I could probably go ahead and get rid of these faces down here. And then, now let's add a subdivision surface modifier and see what happens. I'm gonna come over here, here we go, right down here, and add a subdivision surface modifier. Let's take the views up to two. I'm going to tab into object mode and go to shade smooth. There we go. Now, let's see what we can do to get this in a little bit better shape here. I'm going to press Control R and add an edge loop right in here, like that. And then let's go ahead and maybe add a couple in here. I'm going to press S and X and scale out just a little bit. There we go. Let's add two more in here. This is going to be S and Y, and I'll scale out just a little, little bit like this. Okay, so now we've got that. That's looking pretty good. Let's turn on the edit cage here, at least conform the edit cage to the mesh by pushing that little button there. We can, of course, turn off the subdivision surface modifier by just clicking this one here. And in fact, what I'll do is while I have that here, I'll Go ahead and add an edge loop right down here. And now if we turn the subdivision surface modifier back on, all right, that's looking pretty good, but maybe I want this to be a little bit more curvy. I don't know, let me try this. I'm gonna hit Alt and click that edge, and then I'm gonna hit G two times and slide that down a little bit. And you can see how it kind of curves the edges a little bit more as I pull it down. Maybe something like that. Yeah, let's give that a try. Okay, so we've got one of the buttons. Uh, let's call this, what do we want to call this? Let's call this square button. Okay, there we go. So for the more circular ones, I think we can maybe just do the same thing we did here, except move some edges around. And maybe I'll just um, duplicate this. Let's just do that. I'm going to duplicate this, Shift D. And then this one I'm going to call round button. And then I'm going to hide the square one. There we go. And let's just move some edges around and see what happens. So if I take this edge and this edge, Alt, Shift, click that, and S and X, and scale this in just a bit. And then maybe uh, this and this. And let's, let's just see what happens. I mean, sometimes you just got to try it and see. 
still pretty squarish. Okay, what if we got rid of one of these X dissolve edges and then moved this kind of into the center and let's get rid of one of these here. X dissolve edges. Let's see what happens. Getting a little bit better there. So now what let's do is let's just take this and go S and X and kind of scale it out just a little bit. Let's do that with this one as well, S and Y, and scale that out just a little bit. So we're getting a little bit more of a rounded shape there. Yeah, okay, so S and X and scale that out just a little bit like this. All right, that looks pretty good up here on the top. However, the problem I'm seeing now is that this down here is very rounded as well, and it's fairly squarish here. So how do we get that done? One way we could do that is try and use the bevel tool. And to do that, we could just select the points here, press Control B, move the mouse out, and there we go. You can see how that's kind of creating a, a corner there. So we've just got two segments here. I could turn that down to one, or back up to two, or three. Actually, I think two's fine. So that kind of sharpens that up a little bit. So let's do that for these others and see what happens. I'll select this edge, control B, pull out just a smidge. Yeah, so let's try that. Why not? And let's do that for here, control B. Let's see. See if it'll work. Yeah, that's not too bad. I like the squarish part there. The thing I don't like is how it curves out here, so we kind of need to deal with that. Let's uh, maybe grab this and move it in again, S and Y, S and X. Just move those in a bit. And then maybe we could take these here, scale these in a bit. All right, so let's take a look at these two, see if there's any difference whatsoever. I'm just going to move this to the side and bring this forward. Yeah, so there is a bit of a difference there. In fact, I think I maybe bring this up. I'm going to hit G twice and slide this up just a little bit like this. So yeah, there is a difference. So we've got the square and the more rounded one here, and that's good. All right, so let's look at the size of these. Maybe I need to bring this one down a bit. Let's see how we're doing. Yeah, I think those are okay for the... Uh, size of these in the scene, these are going to be fine. All right, so now let's work on getting these on the cash register. I'm going to bring that back here. And maybe I'll take these two items and kind of move them a bit. Let's move them out of the way. And this part right here, I think what I want to do, I'm going to need to insert quite a few edge loops in this panel to get these little um, indentations where all the buttons are going to go. So I think I'm gonna need to create um, a little panel that's apart from the rest because if I start inserting a whole bunch of edge loops in here, they're going to extend out into the other part of the model and it's gonna be a mess. And I don't know that I wanna do that. I think all I'm gonna do is just split this out. I'm gonna go to edge mode and select this edge all the way around. Let's do that so that this whole thing is selected. Okay. And then what I'll do is go to control E to the edge menu and edge split. So I'll just split that out. Now if I go back to face mode, I can select that and now it's apart from the rest of the object. And so I'm going to bring that down and just put it maybe right in here. Now as I insert edge loops, they won't extend out to the rest of the object. All right, so let's start doing that. Let's uh, place the object or we'll place the, uh, the buttons and then we'll do the little insets after that. All right, so how big should the buttons be? Well, let's come up here, go to the top view and let's see. I'm going to scale it down. It's hard to see. I'm going to go to wireframe so we can see it a little easier. And I'll go down. It looks to me like the center of the piece is this edge right there. So I'm going to bring this over here 
and it looks like we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to scale it down just a smidge. Bring it over here, right down the center, right there. Okay, so now let's go ahead and duplicate these. Actually, I'm going to create an array. Let's do that. I'll bring this window up a bit. Let's go to Modifiers and create an array. There we go. Now, we want it to not go in the x-axis. We want it to go in the y-axis, so I'll type 1 here and Enter. And let's type 0 in the x-axis field. And then we want a little bit of an offset in the Y, so let's click here and then increase the Y just a little bit here. I'll click and drag in there. Something like this. Let's take a look. Let's bring that up. Zoom in. Yeah, so let's bring that down just a little bit like this. I'll go about like that. Now we could also come over here and change our shading. We could uh, change our color to random here so we have a better sense of which object is which. Let me uh, go back over here and I'm going to bring this down. And let's just put it right in here, let's say. There we go. Now what let's do is increase the number of objects in our array. So what did I say? Six. Let's go to count. There's four, five, six right there. Okay. So now we've got these buttons. And it looks like we're positioned pretty well there. Let me scale up just a bit. All right. So now we could go in the x-axis as well. We could just duplicate. But you know what? Let's try adding yet another array modifier. Let's try this, just for fun. We've got the one in the X now. Let's turn on constant offset again. And let's click here and try and move these a bit as well. So maybe about like that. And then let's turn up the count. And there we go. So now we've got four columns and six rows. I think that'll work. So now what let's do is let's create um, this part right here with all the circles. And for this we've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, and three, five by three, and we also have an expanded one here. All right. And it looks like it's a little off from the center, so let's uh, grab this guy right here. And let's go to our, our top view and let's scale this down. And let's move it into place. Let me bring this up. There we go. And we kind of want it to be the same size. Now that we have this, let's turn on another array modifier. So let's do that. Change it to 1 in the Y, 0 in the X. Let's turn on the offset in the Y just a bit, kind of like that. And then let's increase the count. So we want one less right here. Now, I think what I need to do is just duplicate this, move it up, and turn down the count for this here. So let's, let's do that. I'll just press Shift-D and move in the X axis here. Then what I'll do is turn the count down one, and then I'll take this and just move this up like this. I'm gonna just going to click and hold the shift key down to move pretty slowly like this. Okay, and then I'll just, I'll just go ahead and duplicate it in the X. Shift D, X, move over, and there we go. Okay, so now what we need to do is take one more. I'm going to press Shift D, and I'm going to bring this down like this. And then I'm going to turn off the array, and this is going to be this piece right here. So I'll go to vertex mode, and then I'll hit B to border select, and I'll just grab these, and let's see if we can kind of pull these over like this. Then maybe I'll take this edge right here, just border select that as well, and move it into the center. And then it looks like we need some new edge loops, so I'll put one here and move it over, and maybe one here and move it over. Okay, let's see how that works. Okay, not 
too bad. I think that'll probably work for what we need here. Um, now we need a couple of other things. We need these and those. And it looks like those are pretty much the same thing now, doesn't it? So really, I think I could maybe grab this and just move that whole thing over. Let's press Shift D and X. Oops. Shift D and X. And I'm going to slide it over here. Now it looks like maybe I could do, oh, uh, let's do this. And then let's take this array here and turn that down to two. And then let's take this shift D X and move these over here like this. Yeah, it looks like the whole thing is going to need to be bigger now, or at least it looks like the cash register doesn't need to be as wide, right? We'll try that. Okay, so now that we've got this, I just want to put this one, I just want to create this one right here. So to do that, I think what I need to do is go back to the top view here, and I'm just going to take this whole thing and move it up in line with these. Then let's turn our countdown for the Y, I'll turn it down to 5, so there we go. Then I'll take this and move it down in the Y to here. I'll take the arrays off completely. There we go. And then, once again, let's just uh, go to our wireframe, border select. Here we go. Drag that over like this. What let's do now is try and get the cash register the proper size around the button. So if we select this, let's um, press S and X and bring this in just a bit like this. This now could maybe come in a bit, S and X. We'll slide that in just a bit like this. Okay, I think we're getting the basic shape of it now. Now let's work on the basic shape of this whole piece here. I'm going to press Control and spacebar and take a look at this. So it looks like we've got some rounded edges here and we could do this with subdivision surface but I think I want to do it with bevels just to have a little more control over it and because it's going to be fairly far away in the scene I don't need it to be really detailed. So let's just tilt this up and create this piece over here. Yeah and then we'll put the buttons in place. All right, so let me control plus. So I'm going to go ahead and hide all the buttons for now. Let's do that. Then let's start getting this in place. So I do know that I'm going to need some sort of um, an edge loop back here, but I'll wait to do that. So let's go ahead and grab all of these faces here. I'm going to select all of these. And we also need these in here now, don't we? Alt, Shift, Click between two of the faces, and that should select all of those. All right, so now what let's do is move this cursor. Well, I should have done that before I selected all of those. Let's move the cursor to here, Shift S, cursor to selected, and then let's go back and select all those faces. I'll just press Control Z to go back and have those selected. The cursor stays in place. Now let's move the pivot point of all of these faces to the 3D cursor. We can just come up here and change it to 3D cursor here. Now what we can do is press R and X, R, X, and rotate this up like this. So let's say, um, it's hard to know exactly, but let's go with this, like that. Then let's move the cursor down to here, cursor to selected. Then let's select these faces here, and let's kind of tilt these forward. You can see how it's kind of tilted here. R, X, tilt that forward just a bit like that. Then we need this tilt up here, right? So let's shift, uh, press Control R and move this up here like this. And then I think we could just take this edge right here. Looks like it isn't selecting the edge, so I'm going to go to vertex mode and select one point and then control click this. So it looks like selection isn't completely stable at this point in time, but that's okay. That's what a beta is all about. 
I'm going to change it to median point here and let's click and drag this down like this. There we go. So we've got that basic shape. Uh, okay, so now let's grab the all the buttons. I'm going to select the objects here in that collection and let's just move it up. I kind of got these out of alignment here. Let me go to the front view and I'll go to wireframe and let's just select this here and this and let's move these down so they're in line here. There we go. Once again I'll right click on the collection and choose select objects. Now what let's do is try and put this right on this right here. There we go. So now that I've got this lined up what I can do is move the cursor to one of these points. So maybe I'll move the cursor to uh, Oh, let's move it to this point right here, like that. Shift S, cursor to selected. Then let's select all of these. Oh, I better just select them over here. There we go. Now what I can do is, once again, rotate at that cursor. So I can change it up here on the menu, or I can just come down here and hit the period key on the keyboard, and that will bring up the Pi menu, which is the same as up there, and then I'll just choose 3D cursor. Now let's go to the side view, I'll go to wireframe, and let's just kind of try and line it up here. I'll press R, and let's just bring this up. I'm gonna hold the Shift key down, and I'm just trying to line it up. There we go, let's see how that works. Need it to come out a little bit more. I can press R and X and bring it up just a little bit more. There we go. There we go. So now we have our keys there. Well, the next thing I'd like to work on is these curves here along the edges. You've got a, a nice curve here on this corner, and then these edges along here have a little bit of a curve to it. And also there's this separation between the parts here from the top and the bottom. And let's try and work on those things. To do that, we're mainly gonna use the bevel tool, I think. So let's uh, select this object and tab into edit mode. And I'm just gonna insert an edge loop right in here and drag it up. And I want it to be fairly even all the way around, but it's not really that even back here. So let me just uh, select these edges here. And let me hit G twice and just slide this up just a little bit like this. And it appears that this point and maybe this point could move up just a hair. I'll hit G twice again, hold the shift key down and kind of drag up just a hair. It doesn't need to be a whole lot. There we go. And um, yeah, that looks pretty good. Maybe I'll actually grab these here too and move these down just a smidge, hitting G twice. Uh, let me try that again, G twice. There we go. And move that down just a little bit. Okay, so now I think that's fairly even all the way around. So now if I alt click that whole edge all the way, then what we can do is press control B. And actually before I do this, let me escape out of that, I see that the cursor or the pivot point is still at the 3D cursor. I don't want that. I want it in the median point. And in addition, now that I think about it, what we also should consider is whether or not the scale and rotation have been applied. In other words, if I, if I hit the N key over here, I can take a look at the scale here and see that those values are not uniform. And when they're not uniform and you try and use a tool like the bevel tool, it can be, it can produce some unexpected results. So I'll tell you what let's do. Let's go ahead and press Control A and let's apply the rotation and the scale for this object. I'll click there and now you can see the rotations, all zeros and scale is all one. So that's gonna help with this particular tool. All right, let's go back to this and press Control B and I'll hold the shift key down and just drag out just a little bit like this. And then I'll add one segment in here. That adds that edge right down the center. I'll 
alt click that to select it and then I'll press the S key and scale that in just a little bit like that. Yeah, so that gives us a little bit of um, a definition between those parts. And also we want um, this curve here. So let's go ahead and select these edges. Alt click these all the way around. Alt shift click that. And this one here. And then let's press control B and let's drag out like this and try and get that about how big we need it. I'll increase the number of segments maybe to four, let's say. Let's try that. And if we tab back into object mode, is that about right? Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Okay, so now let's do these edges on the top and the bottom. So this along here, I'm just going to alt shift click all of these. And then I need to come in and get these as well, right in here. Well, it looks like I did a little bit too much here. Let me alt shift click this to deselect that. And then this and this. There we go. So that's what I want on the top. And then on the bottom, let's go ahead and do these as well. Get these all the way around. And then, once again, let's press control B. And I'm going to drag out just a little bit. And I don't want it quite as big as previous one. That's why I'm doing these kind of in two different passes here. So maybe something like this. Can I bring down the number of segments? How about three? Let's try that. Okay, yeah, we're getting there. That's a pretty good bevel there. Also, let's grab this one in here. Let's grab uh, this here. I'm just going to select all of these edges here. Press Control B and do the same here with just a tiny little bevel there. We don't need a whole lot. Maybe could I even take it down to two? Perhaps. Let's try it. Yeah, that just gives a little bit of differentiation there so we can see that. Okay, that's pretty good. Now, also, I want to create this little piece right in here. Um, and I think what I'll do is just insert some edge loops up in here. So let's maybe do here and maybe one here. And then it looks like, oh, it, there's an edge loop here and an edge loop maybe here. Okay. And you can see what I mean by since we've split this panel out. I'm not getting the edge loops going through here, and that's that, that's a good thing because I think I'm going to need to create some edge loops for these buttons here. But for now, let's go back to here, and uh, I guess what I'll do is just create two edges in here, and then maybe grab this one and hit G twice and drag it down, and this one and G twice and drag it up. Select that face and just hit E and extrude down and let's see how that works. Okay, so we'll put a little piece of paper in there here pretty soon. But for now, let's see how this is going to smooth out. I'm not sure if the smoothing is really going to work for this. So let's go up here and go to Object and uh, Shade Smooth. And it's looking a little wonky, isn't it? It's got some artifacting here and this looks kind of strange. So let's go over to the object data panel here. And under normals, let's turn on auto smooth. And now that's already looking quite a bit better. But let's um, let's drag this all the way down to zero here. And that's let's begin from scratch now. And then let's slowly kind of drag it up. And let's see how it clears up. Yeah, it's beginning to clear up a bit around the corners there. That's good. So around 24, it's not looking too bad, is it? Let me take it a little bit higher and see. Well, now we get this up there on the top. I don't really like that there. So it looks like around 30 is pretty good, actually. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so now that we've got that, let's uh, maybe take a look at this thing here. And what is that? <laughs> I don't even, 
it's a screen, I, I know, but it looks like a cube that's been angled back like that. It's really hard to tell exactly what it is, but we're going to try and get as close as we can. So I'm going to go ahead and save, and then let's go ahead and turn off the cache register, turn off the visibility for the buttons, and let's move that cursor to the world origin, and let's begin working on this. So it looks just like a cube, I guess, and I guess what we can do is maybe scale it into Z a bit. Let's take the face on the back here and kind of pull it in a bit. And then let's scale it in the Z, I think, S and Z, and scale it in the Z. Well, let's bring it in a little bit more like this. All right, and then maybe we could take this face up here. And um, let's do an inset. Let's hit I and just drag in. And maybe then once we've got this, let's hit E and push in like this. And maybe that's our screen. Um, it looks like it's got like an angled area here, so maybe let's um, scale in the Z like this. Looks like it's got quite an angle going in like this on the top and the bottom, and then a bit of an angle on the side, so S and X, and let's drag that in just a little bit like that. Um, but let's let's go ahead and add a few bevels to this. Um, Let's maybe add one to here, maybe back here as well. Let's go ahead and add these. Let's see how this works. Oh, let me deselect these. I guess while I'm here, I'll go ahead and do these as well. Okay, so now let's tab back into object mode and take a look at the scale. Well, it's a little bit off, so Control A and I'll apply the scale. Now if we come back here, let's press Control B and let's drag out just a little bit like that. Yeah, that gives it a little bit, that's good. And then on the inside, I feel like this may be going a little bit too far, but I feel like there's a little bit of something in here. Let's try it. Hit B, Control B and pull out just a bit there. Let's see if that, let's see now if we smooth it here and then turn on auto smooth over here and click and drag let's see what happens so there it is unsmoothed all the way at zero and if we click and drag yeah that kinda cleans it up there like that that's not bad we've currently got this in the collection for all the buttons um, let's grab this and pull it out and drop it up on the scene collection like this. And then we can take it and call this, um, we'll just call it screen for now. And then let's bring everything else back here. And I'll scale this down and let's try and put it in place even if we don't have all the pieces that we need quite yet. I'm going to rotate in the X with RX and kind of tilt it a bit like this. And let's see what we can see if we can put this in a position that looks kind of like it's supposed to be there. And it looks to me like what we could do also is maybe select this edge all the way around. And let's press Control E. And let's come down here and choose Mark Sharp and see what happens here. Let's click that. Now let's go back and see. Yeah, and that cleans that up just a bit so that screen kind of stays flat no matter what angle you're at. So let me go back and let's take a look at it without it. Let me undo it. So you can see how we've got this kind of glare on there that makes it look like it's kind of curving in. And that's why I I did that, so let me add it again. Mark sharp, and now if you take a look at it, we don't get that glare, and it stays flat. Now, I'm not sure if this piece here is actually connected to the back of the cache register, or if it goes in the top at this piece here, but really there's no way to know um, from these images. So 
I'm going to make a decision and I'm going to say it goes right in the top. If you know differently, that's fine, but I'm just going to go ahead and do it that way. So let's go ahead and create a cylinder here. And for this cylinder, I certainly don't need 32 sides. Let's just give it uh, 12. And um, once again, I don't need any cap fills. And let's just move this up and into place. Um, I think I can just maybe go to the top view here. I'll go to wireframe and let's just put it in place here. I'm going to bring it back. It looks like it's um, almost centered here behind this guy, it looks like. So I'll maybe bring it down like that and have about, how about like this. Let's give this a try. Go to the side view. Let's bring it up. And uh, maybe a little bit smaller. And then let's just tab into edit mode, go to vertex mode, and I'll just hit the B key and border select this area right here and drag that up. Um, it looks like it's not very high there, so I'll go ahead and do that. Now let's um, add another one. It looks like there's a, another one inside there, so you can kind of extend that up if you want, I guess. So I'll just press Shift D and duplicate it, scale it in just a smidge, and then bring that up, kind of like that. I guess I can take these edges here. They're still selected and hit E and scale those in. Now let's place this thing. Let's get this thing in order. It looks very similar to this, but I don't think I want to duplicate it. I think I want to create a new one. So what I'll do is I'll just select this one. That edge is still selected, so I'll press Shift D and move the cursor to that selection. And then that's where the new object is going to be placed when we press Shift A. And let's bring in a cube. And of course, it's huge. So bring that down a bit. And uh, I'll bring it up. Let's go to the side view. I'll bring it up so it's kind of sitting up here. Once again, it's hard to tell exactly how high that is, but I think this is probably pretty good. I'll hit S and Y to scale that in a bit. And then let's go around here and hit S and X and kind of scale that out a bit like this. And it looks like it's, oh, it's hard to know <laughs> from these images. But it looks like it's about like that, maybe. And then what let's do is go ahead and smooth these and see how it looks. So let's go ahead and select these two cylinders and let's go to Object and uh, Shade Smooth. There we go. And then we could also maybe add just a little bit of a bevel right here. I'll select that and press Control B and pull out just a little bit like this. Oh, a little too much there, about like that. And then let's add a segment. There we go. So we've got just a little bit of a bevel there. And um, you can see the polygons if you zoom way in like this. But frankly, we're going to be so far zoomed out with this in the scene. I don't think we're ever going to get any closer than this. So I'm not going to worry about that too much. And now that I have this, it looks to me like this is a little bit too thick for some reason. I don't know why. Let's work on this for just a minute. Let me select this face and then press Control plus and expand that. And instead of using the global orientation, I'm going to change to local orientation right here. And that changes the move gizmo to be in line with the object. And I'm just going to bring it in just a little bit like that. There we go. OK. So now we've got those. This here, I think I'm going to need to do a bit of beveling again to get these curved edges. And in addition, there's kind of a rim on the edge like this. And is that back curved? It kind of looks like it is. It's really hard to tell. But let's, um, what let's do is let's go ahead and add an edge loop here and then choose this face and kind of just pull it out just a little bit like that. And then maybe we could grab this edge and pull it in a bit. I mean, it's really hard to know from this, but maybe that's kind of the way it is. Uh, maybe we could even grab this edge and pull it in just a bit. Let's try that. And then, once again, I'm going to add an edge loop right here and do that same thing we did before with this edge here. I'm just going to press Control b and pull out just a bit like this. And we've already got two segments here, so we get an edge right here. So I'll select that 
and then I'll press S and scale in just a bit. And that gives us just a little bit of a rim there. And then let's go ahead and work on the bevels around the sides. So let's select this edge, Alt-Shift select this edge, and on around here. And does it look like there's kind of a bevel in the back? It kind of does, but let me do that separately. I'll do that again. So let's just press Control b here and pull out just a bit like this. And let's add a segment to that. See how that works. Yeah, OK. And now let's try this one up here. Can we select this one and give it a bit of a bevel? Let's try. Control b pull out just a bit. Well, just too much there. I'm beginning to intersect with the other bevel there. I don't want to do that. Yeah, I think that'll work there. All right, let's give that a try. And then let's go ahead and smooth it. And we could also come over here, turn on Auto Smooth. And let's begin adjusting this slider here until we get it the way we want. That seems to be a little bit too much. You know what I could do as well? is give just a little bit of a bevel up front here, this right here. Let's try this. So control B, just a little tiny bit like that. We don't need quite so many segments in that. There we go, let's try that. Uh, and maybe even in here, let's try that. Let's try this too, just a little tiny one. There we go. All right, let's give that a try. Now that I've got it like this, though, I feel like it needs to be pulled out a little bit in the X. Oh, let's also take this and spin it around, R and Z. Let's just kind of spin that around like that. Um, let's now work on this area down here. It looks like we should do a little bit of work for this. We've got um, the drawer here, and then we've also got... Um, we've got a, an inset here. I kind of like it clean like this, and it's easier, frankly. <laughs> oh, and we've also got this piece right in here. I wonder if we could just um, insert that real quick. Let's give that a try, see if it throws everything off. Um, so what I'm going to do is insert two edge loops here, maybe like this, and then I'll insert two edge loops here, like this. Then let's take this face here and let's just extrude it in. Let me uh, turn on global again right here. And then I'll hit E and click and then I'll pull straight back in the Y like this, just a little bit. And then um, looks like we need to do that again. Maybe I'll hit I and scale in or pull in like that. Um, and then hit E and pull straight back again like that. Let's see what happens here to our smoothing. Well, actually, not bad. Not bad. Uh, let's give it a bevel or two and see if we screw anything up. <laughs> That's always the fun part. See how much gets screwed up here by our work. So I'm going to go ahead and press Control B, and then let's scale that out or pull that out just a bit, like that. All right, and then let's grab this one here and do the same thing. All right, now let's try this one down here. So as I said, I think I want this one instead of this one with the inset in it. Let's go ahead and create this first. So what I'll do once again is just select that face, hit I to inset, and let's just uh, Bring it in just a little bit. Looks like we need to scale it in the Z like that. Now what we should do is split this piece out from this part in here. So what we can do is just hit E and extrude this back just a bit. Now let's go to Edge Mode with the 2 key. And then what let's do is press Control e to go to the Edge menu. And we can choose Edge Split here. And then we can go back to face mode, select that face, and we can pull it out, and you can see it's its own piece now. So let's now bring that back in, insert it just 
slightly, uh, kind of like that. And then what we can do is shrink it down just a bit. Hit S and scale it down just a smidge. Maybe scale it in the Z just a smidge like that. Now we can go back to edge mode and extrude straight back. I'll hit E and click, and then I'm just going to pull back like that. So now we've got the makings of a drawer there. Um, I'm not going to worry about bevels on the inside. I know they're kind of curved in here, but that's going to be that's going to raise more issues than I think I want to deal with. <laughs> so I'm going to just stick to beveling here on the outside. So maybe this edge and this edge, and uh, I don't know if we need an edge in the back. I don't think so. It looks like it's just these two edges on the top. So I'll go ahead and press Control B and pull these out a bit. It looks like it's not beveling straight. You can see it's kind of flattened here. So let's undo this, and I think the problem is, is we need to apply the scale here. So let's press Control A and apply the scale, and now let's try it again. Control B. Let's pull that out. Yeah, that looks a whole lot better like that, more even, if we apply the scale. And let me just round that off like that. All right. That looks pretty good. Um, let's go ahead and smooth this and see how it works. Shade smooth. Uh, we need some work here. Let's go to auto smooth and let's start dragging it up from zero and see what we can do here. Well, that's not bad right there. Yeah, that's a pretty good curve. All right, I can live with that. And while we're here, let's go ahead and add the little feet. So um, let's make sure we're back at the world origin for the 3D cursor. Let's press Shift A, create a cylinder again. For this, let's take it down to, ah, um, oh, 12 is fine. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to scale it down like this. I'm going to press the division key on the number pad to isolate it so I can just work with it here. And then I'll grab, say, this edge right here and scale this in and maybe pull it up so we get kind of a little angled foot like this. Then let's smooth it. So I'll hit that division key again. Now let's go back to the front view and in fact let's go to our quad view control alt Q and let's take a look at it from four different views I kinda wanna see it from these angles here we can tumble here and turn this into a perspective right there now it makes it easier to place this so I'll just scale it down a little bit more move it up there we go and let's move it forward and they're pretty far forward here I'll move it to the right like that. Okay, so we, now we've got that. Let's um, duplicate this with Shift D, and I'll hit X to drag it in the X axis. We'll move it over here. And then we can select these two and press Shift D again. Select the Y axis and drag back, and we can put it right about here. Okay. While we're here, since the cash register is kind of floating here, let's grab one of the feet and duplicate it and bring it up, and let's just put it in here. We can scale it down and maybe put it right there. There we go. So it isn't floating in the air. Let's uh, move it over to here and then duplicate. Hit the X key and move that over. And then let's grab both of them and do the same thing we did before. Shift D and Y and pull that back. And maybe we can put them right back here. While we're talking about things just floating, let's work on this here. Um, how did it look before? We saw that it was just kind of a curved thing, didn't we? Let's see if we can get something that kind of looks like that. Perhaps we should just create a mesh plane and uh, bring it up here. Scale it way down, of course, like this. Maybe we could turn it and put it here. And then let's kind of give it that curve. So it's kind of, as I've said, it's kind of difficult for me to see exactly the way this is working. But if 
we take this and move it over and uh, scale it a bit like this. Now what let's do is maybe add a couple of edge loops here. Um, I'll press Control R and add two edge loops here. And then let's go to wireframe and see if we can actually see them. Okay, yeah, we can. Now I just want to border select, say, this one, and it looks like it just kind of moves out like this. And then these two points I'll move in. Really difficult to know, but let's just go with it. <laughs> and we can move that out like that. So what we're now thinking is that this should have a smoother curve, of course. So let's um, go to the modifiers panel. And for this, I will go ahead and use a subdivision surface modifier. And let's take the views up to two. Let's turn on the edit cage. And let's go to object and shade smooth. Now let's see what we have here. All right. What we can do is go ahead and insert a couple of edge loops here, like this. I'll scale out in the X, and we'll try and get this. That's a little bit too much there. And then what we can do is maybe insert an edge loop up at the top and down at the bottom. All right, so we've got that. It looks, I think, OK. Let me press Control-Alt-Q, and let's go back to our main view here. Now what we can do is add a solidify modifier, and that'll give it some thickness. So let's come over here, add modifier, solidify, and let's use even thickness, and let's click and drag, and there we go. Now we've got it. a little bit of thickness here, like that. All right, uh, let's go ahead and apply the solidify modifier here. Um, it looks like we've got, I don't know, something under here that's similar to that. It curves the other way. Let me actually um, try and cheat just a little bit. Since it's under there and we can't really see what's going on, what let's do is duplicate that. And then um, let's spin it around in the Z, RZ180, like that. And then let's just extend it out. Let's press S and X and scale that out a bit like this. Let's see what happens there. Yeah, so as I said, I'm not sure what's happening in there. We can't really see it. And if we can't see it, then nobody else can, right? <laughs> so let's just drag that out a bit. There we go. Okay. We could now add a little cylinder here for the cash drawer. Why don't we do that? I'll Press Shift A and let's bring in a cylinder. Uh, let's see how many sides we have. It's 32. Let's just use um, 16 here. And we've got an end gun for the cap fill. Why don't we use a triangle fan? Let's do that instead. I'll then press RX90 and spin that around. We could go ahead and remove the cap fill on the back side here. We don't need all of these, so if we go to face mode and hit the C key, we can circle select all of those and delete them. Then we could scale this down quite a bit, uh, maybe move the origin back to within the object. So let's go set origin to geometry. There we go. And we could scale it down some more, try and move it into place. There we go. And we could also grab these faces here and scale them in a bit. And then let's go ahead and hit E and extrude and scale that in. And it looks like there's just a little bit of a rim there. So maybe um, E and pull in, extrude and scale in, extrude and pull out. We could go ahead and delete these here. And let's um, then grab this edge here. Let's extrude and pull in. So we don't really need all this detail in here for the lock. We just need kind of a hole, uh, a rectangular hole there. So what let's do is let's deselect these four edges up top and these four edges on the bottom down here. Then let's hit 
S and X and kind of scale that in like this. And then what we could do is uh, just do one side here. So we could maybe grab these S and X and flatten that up like this and move that in. Same thing over here, scale in the X to flatten and kind of move that over so it's in line right there. Oh, we should bring these down like this. Scale in the Z. Select that whole thing and maybe scale it down a bit. Move it up like this. Okay. And then we can just hit E, pull back. Um, and then let's just, let's just pull all the way back into here. Let's see how that works. Okay. So there is that. Oh, we should probably smooth it as well, huh? So let's go to Shade Smooth. And of course, it looks awful. So let's go over here to our Auto Smooth. And let's see what we can do with this. See if this helps any. I'll just drag in here. And it looks like until we get to about right here. So let's go with this. This is just under 80 for me. So yeah, let's go with that. I think that'll be fine. And then I think the last thing we need for the modeling is the little piece of paper here. Um, for that, we could go ahead and create another cylinder. We could turn it, RY90. Oh, I forgot to get rid of the uh, cap fills. We'll just have to do that ourselves here. Let me go ahead and select all of this in edit mode so we can see it. And I'll scale it down. I'm going to move the origin into the geometry here. Scale out in the X. So what I can do now is go ahead and delete, say, these faces here. Actually, this face would be enough right there. There we go. We could delete these as well. Let me go into wireframe. And we could delete some of these down here. We don't need all of these. There we go. And then I guess we can go ahead and smooth this. There we go. All right. Now we have a receipt. I think there's one last thing I'd like to do in the modeling stage before we begin to move to materials, and that's add a little bevel to this right here. Oh, and also create the insets for the buttons. Okay, so a couple more things. For this, I think let's um, zoom in here. We're going to have to really get in tight to select these. Let me select that edge, and I'll go through and select all these edges here. All right, so now that we have those edges selected here, let's make sure. Yep, we've got all four of them selected. Now we can go ahead and bevel these out. Let me make sure that our scale is uniform. Yep, it is. Okay, so now what I'll do is go ahead and press Control B, and I'll pull out just a little bit like this, and increase the number of segments. Uh, let's try this. Should I do four? Is that too many? Well, it's not bad. Let's give it a try. Okay, that's pretty good. Yeah, actually that works pretty well. I like that. So I think I'll just select this face right here because this is the one we want to work with. And I want to split this out as its own object. So to do that, with that selected, I'll press the P key and separate by selection. And now if we tab back into object mode, that will be its own object right there. So now the random colors has given it a color that's kind of like it is when you select it. Maybe I'll go back to uh, single here for now. And then let's go to the top view. Let's tab into edit mode. And now let's insert some edge loops. So let's say one right here. I'm just going to put them right on the outsides of each of these collections of keys here. There we go. And one up top. So right there. 
I need one right in here too for the top of this. And then I need one for the bottom down here like this. There we go. All right, so now what we can do is select all of these. Let's go to face mode and I want to select these, this, these, and this. Then what I want to do is let's see if I can turn that by going to local transformation. No, how about normal? Yeah, there we go. So now I can pull it in in that direction. All right, so let's hit E to extrude and then just pull in just a little bit like this. So now I think we are actually done with the modeling. Let's see, let's just make sure here. I could put more on the back here. I could put like a cable going to here and an extension cord or an electrical cord going down and maybe that'll happen as I put it into the scene. But for now, I think this is pretty good. Let's go ahead and go with this. So now let's begin assigning materials. There's not a whole lot to it. It's just kind of black, but there are a couple of different shades of black and gray here. There's this and this and this. So we can create those and the chrome or the silver for the lock and the feet. We can do a bit of work here. Let's go ahead and go up to our EV viewport here. I'll just click that. And now we can see it here in the EV renderer. And there's not much in terms of lighting here, but if we go over to the shading tab, there we go, now we can see it a little bit better. And we can begin bringing in a few materials and seeing what we can do with this. Let me go ahead and bring in that image again over here. I'll create a UV image editor and click open. And let's go find that again. Maybe let's use this one here. So let's choose the cache register itself and let's go to materials and let's click new. All right, so I've got this down here, the principled BSDF, and here it is here. I can always just click the base color right here, click on the eyedropper and then come over here and select say this and that'll give us that color there. Then maybe we should tab into edit mode and grab these faces on the top. Maybe I'll select this, press control plus. Let's see how, yeah, we've got that there, okay. And then I'm gonna just hit the C key and circle select all of this up here. Looks like we have some extras selected down here. Let me get rid of these with the circle select and middle mouse button. Now we've got all that selected. Let's give it a new material. Uh, I guess this old one, we should give it a name. Let's do a uh, cache register. Actually, well, let's just do base. And then let's create a new material slot. And we'll add a new material. And we'll call this one top, let's say. And let's assign these faces to that assign and then let's uh, select the color eyedropper and grab this. There we go. Now let's also select this down here, give it a new material. Let's call this uh, drawer. And let's select this color eyedropper and I'll go with this one here. Okay. I feel like this color needs something a little bit more. Let me uh, click on this eyedropper and maybe grab something a little bit, you know, darker here. Maybe, uh, and then maybe I should do the same for this one here. Let's grab something a little bit darker. Maybe like uh, here. There we go. Uh, this color here, this is pretty dark here. Let's click new and let's call this, um, keys base. Let's do that. And let's select that and grab this color right in here. I feel like now this is too dark. Let's uh, go back to this and that top and let's just click here and drag up just a bit like this. 
Let's get these other pieces, maybe this thing right here, the screen, we'll just call this, uh, well, we'll just call it screen for now. And let's grab our color out of this, maybe this one right here. There we go. And this back here, looks like that's pretty much all one color. Let's select this, call this, um, we'll call this display. And grab this color. Uh, maybe we'll just grab that right there. Yeah, there we go. And these two, I'll just select these two and then shift select this. And then let's press control L to link the materials right here. And that'll add that material to those. Okay. We're getting there. I'm, I'm still not real fond of this right here. Let me see what I can do. Maybe grab another shade all right and then i'll maybe drag it down just a bit like this uh we need these pieces here i think i'll use the same material i'll select these two this piece and this piece and then shift select this once again control l and material to assign the material to those so and also for the feet i think what i want to do is uh, i'll make these pretty much the same Let's call this feet, and I just want to bring this down so it's pretty dark like that. There we go. And all I'm doing now is just establishing color. We'll actually deal with the roughness and everything here in just a minute. Let me grab all of these, and with all of those feet selected, I'll just select this one that already has the material, Control L, and choose material. Let's take this piece of paper here and let's just give it uh, a material. It's pretty much there. Uh, I'll just take this and move it down just a little bit like this so it isn't quite so bright white. This thing here should really be more of a silver. Let's do that real quick. And I will, uh, actually I'll go ahead and grab Maybe this in here. Let's see how that works. Eyedropper that. Uh, let's try it again. There we go. That's pretty good. At least for now, that'll work. And then let's uh, work on the keys now. So this is going to be a little interesting. I, I know we can go ahead and do all of these at once. Let's do this. So I'll create this and call this rounded keys and let's just uh, grab our eyedropper and select this there we go so now we can grab these and shift select that control l and materials so we've got those now for the keys on the cash register i think we're going to have to apply some of the modifiers that we have on here. So for this area right here, if we go over to the modifiers tab, yeah, we're going to need to apply these arrays so I can pick out individual ones to give them individual colors. So I'll go ahead and apply this and let's apply this one as well. There we go. Now this is all one object and we can begin selecting these and giving them color. So to begin with, let's just give it a plain white. Let's just give all of them that white, and then we can go in and add the blue. So let's just go here, create a new material, and let's call these, um, I'll call them keys white. And then we'll go into edit mode and select the ones we need to be blue. So maybe just these up here. And as I've said, I'm not going to worry about the numbers or the letters on these. We will never be close enough in the scene to see all that. Um, and also, I've got uh, my UVs over my image here. I guess I, what I should do is actually, instead of using the UV editor, I'll go to the image editor and that'll clean that up. All right, so over here, let's go ahead and, and add a new material slot so we can add multiple materials to one object. So I'll click here to create a new material slot. Let's click new to create a new material and we'll call this keys uh, blue, why not? And we'll click assign to assign that material to these selected keys. 
All right, so now let's go to um, the whites and let's, well, really that's pretty much the way we want it, I think, at least for now. That's just plain white. And for the blue, let's go ahead and click the eyedropper and, oh, let me escape out of that. I clicked the wrong thing here. Let me uh, grab that eyedropper again and let's find a color right in here maybe. Yeah, that's not too bad. I feel like it could be a little bit darker, so let's just drag that down just a little bit. Yeah, let's try that. Okay. Let's do these over here. It looks like we've got gray keys again, and then the blue, and then the pink, and a green. So let's work on those. So here, let's make sure we need to, yes, we need to apply the modifier here and here. And then let's go ahead and add a material to these. So we'll call this, uh, we'll call this keys gray, because that's kind of a gray color there. I'll click the eyedropper and just grab that color off of that right there. Okay. Then we need to select a few of these keys and give it the blue. Let me add a new material slot here. We'll give it that uh, keys blue and we'll tab into edit mode and let's just select this, 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 and this one. Is that right? Looks like I've got extras in here. One, two, three, four. Oh, that's because on the other one, on the other image, we've got more keys. Yeah, okay, so I was doing the keys from the other image. I get it, okay. Uh, let's go ahead and assign the blue to this. Okay, and then let's do a red for this. Let's create a new material slot. We'll call it uh, keys red. And we'll assign it to this one right here assign and let's uh, grab that color off of there as well maybe right there let's try that yeah it needs a little bit more it's kind of dull let me give it a little bit more here a bit more red maybe yeah something like that okay and then this thing down here we need a green bluish green for this let's call this uh, keys green and we'll grab th that color as well. There we go. Eh, I didn't really get a green out of that, <laughs> did I? Let me move it over to the green just a bit. I kind of want a green, there we go. Okay, now let's go over here. Looks like, uh, looks like these are all colors we've already done. So let's zoom in over here. Let's create a new material. Let's, um, well, we really didn't need to create a new material. We just needed to create a new material slot, but that's okay. I'll do gray for the whole thing. Actually, I could do blue for the whole thing. It looks like we've got more blue there, right? There we go. Now, let's tab into edit mode. Oh, we need to apply our array modifiers. Let's do that. Okay. And now, let's go in and let's say this one here. What do we need for that? We need a gray new material slot, gray assign, okay, uh, and then we need these three here, and that's a new material slot, and that is the red assign, there we go, okay, so now we've got our keys pretty well done, and okay, so now I think what we need to do is work on the images here, oh, Actually, before I do that, there's one little piece right in here. Let me select this. This right in here, I kind of want to add a black to this that matches that right there. So let's see what this is. This is keys base. So I want to use that. Actually, what I'll do is I'll select this one face here and then press Control plus and that will expand that out like that. There we go. And then I want to create a new material slot for this as well here and then I want that keys base right here and assign. Let's do that. So that gives that a little bit of color there. That's good. 
All right, let's start thinking about putting those images on. Um, I've gone into Krita and created a couple of these images. Um, I've created this and a receipt and some green numbers on a black screen. I didn't create that brand name there. Maybe I should have done that, but I think that's okay. And I also didn't create this brand name here, but um, that's okay. So let's um, come over to our UV editing here and let's work on UV mapping a couple of these pieces so that we can apply a texture. Um, this is good, this is a UV editor, so let's um, grab this. I'll zoom in with the period key and let's tab into edit mode and I'll go to face mode and I think all we need to do is just UV map this face right here. Before we do that, let me make sure that we've applied the scale to this particular object, and we have not. So I'm going to go ahead and do that because UV mapping like beveling and a whole lot of other tools in Blender really work better if we apply the scale. And I'll go ahead and apply the rotation as well. So here we go, control A, apply the rotation and scale. And now if we tab back into edit mode and I'll select that one face there and hit U and unwrap. And there we go. All right, so let's select the UV island and press R90 and turn it. And we'll kind of put it in here. For now, we may have to move it around once we get our texture in. And uh, we're going to need a new material here for this object or for this face. Let's uh, come back over to the materials here. And in the screen, we're going to call this... Um, We'll give it a new material slot. We'll, let's call it screen image. And then we will tab into edit mode again and apply that one face to it. So I'll hit assign. There we go. All right, let's go back to our shading. And we can bring in an image here for the screen image material. Let's do that. So I'm going to press Shift A and bring in a image texture and put that here. I'll go ahead and click open and I'll browse to my textures folder and see we've got a couple of these here. Here is that screen image I want so I'll click open and I really want it to line up with my UV images so let me switch over to a UV editor and I'll bring in that image here. Actually I can just pull this down here. There it is right there. And I'll tab into edit mode and there is the UV map over the image. I'm going to press control space bar to make it full screen here. And then what I want to do is just move this till it's maybe I'll press S and X and scale it in just a bit. Then S and Y and scale it up. So it just fits around here. G and Y, slide that up. And it looks like it's turned just a smidge. I'm going to rotate it just a bit so it's kind of going in the right direction here. All right, let's see if that works. I'm going to press Control, Space Bar again. And then I'm going to click on Color and drag this into the base color here. Okay, so let's see how that worked. Yeah, there we go. So we have that in there. That's fine. How about this up here? Let's do the same thing here. Um, I'll go back to my UV editing real quick and let's just select uh, this object. Let's apply the rotation and scale. I will tab back into edit mode and just this face right here. Let's go ahead and hit U and unwrap for that. Let's then um, Press R90 and turn that. There we go. We've got that in place, I think. Now let's go back to our shading. And for this, we actually need we need this to be another material now, too. So let's create a new material slot. Let's go to uh, new, and for this, we'll call this display image and assign. There we go. Now let's bring in a texture for this. So let's press Shift A, Texture, Image Texture, Open, go find our texture, and here, let's go with this. 
open image. I will uh, bring this into here. And then let's tab into edit mode, select these two. And now we're going to need to, I'll connect this up. Now we're going to need to arrange this again, control space. Um, it looks like it's pretty good in the X. I'm gonna just going to bring it in a little bit like this. And then let's uh, press S and Y, scale that up quite a bit. And let's try this, see how this works. Okay, that'll work. And now the last one we need to do for our UVing is the receipt. Let's do that. I've got a receipt here as well. So this paper material can be used for this. That's not going to be a problem. So with this, I'll just press Shift A. Oh, let's go down here and press Shift A. Image texture will bring in the receipt. Here it is. And we will connect that up. It's not looking too good, so let's come in and work on this. I'll tab into edit mode and select that all. I think the problem is that I haven't UV'd it, so let's uh, press Control A and apply the rotation and scale. Now let's press U and unwrap. Better, okay, let's bring in that image. Here it is. And now we can play with this. So Control Space. Let's see, I'll just select everything in G and X and kind of slide it into here. S and Y and slide it down some or scale it down a bit. And then um, S and X and we'll scale this out. Let's see how that worked. Um, actually, I think what I want to do real quick is maybe border select these points here. G and X and move those in just a bit. There we go. All right, let's go back and see how we're doing. And it is upside down. Okay, so let's select all of these and let's press um, R180 and spin that around. Now let's take a look at this. Yeah, I think that'll work. Let me just select these points right over here again and slide these over just a little bit. So you can see how it moves in the 3D view when we do this. So something like that. There we go. All right, well, let's start setting up some lights. To do that, I'm going to go back over to the Layout tab, and here's our model. We can, of course, go to the Look Dev view here and see what we just did. That's the view we were just in. And then the rendered view with the EV renderer is here. And so what I want to do is use this viewport and add a few lights. So let's uh, just press Shift A and go to Light and I'll create an area light. I like area lights for some reason. Um, I think they give a nice quality of light here. I'm going to go to the side view and hit the R key and rotate that so we get that. This will be maybe our key light. Go to the top view here and turn it. So there we go. There is the beginnings of our lighting scheme. And what I'm going to do once I get the lights in is adjust the metallic and the roughness and the specular for each of these materials under the lights. So they reflect and have uh, specular highlights that are appropriate for the lights in the scene. So if this is our main light. Let me come over here. We've got an energy of 10. Okay, so let's say uh, we want uh, a backlight as well. I'll go back to that top view and let's just hit Shift D and duplicate this light here and move it back kind of on the opposite side. Let's rotate this around, put it back here, and I'm going to bring the um, energy down. Let's just say um, Five for now. We don't really know exactly what it's going to be. And um, okay, that may be a little bit hot. I think what I'm going to do is establish where a camera is going to be. So let's say the camera is going to be about like this. And if that's the case, then of course these 
lights are in the wrong place. And that's why we want to establish a camera now so we know from where we're going to be seeing this. And it's just going to be a rendered image for now. All right, so um, let's go ahead and press Shift A and create a camera. And there it is right there. I'm going to switch to global transformation and move this up and over kind of where we want it to be like this. So let's um, figure out kind of where we want our camera to be. I kind of want it to be from this angle right about like this. So what we can do is move the camera to this view. And to do that, we can come over here to view, align view. And we can align the active camera to view. Now we can also press Control Numpad, Control Alt Numpad Zero, but I'll just click that, and that puts the camera there from this same angle. All right, so there it is. I'm just going to scale the camera down a bit. It doesn't do anything except just change the size in the scene. And uh, let's go ahead and drag a window down here. And this will become our rendered view here. So I'm going to hit the zero key to go to the camera view. All right, and I'll change it to the EV renderer. So there's our camera view right here. Let's um, move the camera back a bit. I'll change from global to local transformation. And that allows me to pull the camera back in alignment with the way it's tilted there and maybe move it up just a bit. There we go. So this is going to be the angle from which we actually render the scene. Okay, so now that we've got this, we know a little bit more about what we should be doing with the lights, right? So maybe now that I know this, maybe instead of having the light above the camera, which I don't recommend ever doing, um, let me move this over here, and let's turn it like this maybe and see if we can get this more at an angle and then let's take this light and move it over to the other side so once again we know what we need once we begin putting the camera in we can get a better sense of what we need from our lights all right let me go back to the side view here and tilt that down just a bit there we go. That's beginning to look a little bit better. And you can see how the bevels are giving us a little bit of that uh, specular highlight along the curves there. If we just had straight edges along here, we wouldn't get these nice highlights here along the edges. All right. So now that we've got this, let's do one more thing in terms of the lighting before we begin adjusting the metallic, the specular, the roughness, etc. Let's get an HDRI in here, an HDR image. And if we go back to the shading tab, you can see we have one in here. As we tumble around, you can kind of see it out there in the view. You can kind of see it back there. And this is it right here. It's an HDR of um, some trees here in, in here. And that's just kind of the standard one that we have in the shading tab here. And if you go out to cloud.blender.org, here we go, you can access the libraries here on the Blender Cloud. And that allows you to get to uh, textures and HDRIs and characters. And this is a membership site. I think it's uh, $10 a month now. And this not only supports Blender and its development, but also gives you access to just tons of cool stuff. And so you can come in here to the HDRIs, and I'm going to want an indoor one. And I've already downloaded one that I want, so we can go use that. But this is just an example of what you can get here on the Blender Cloud. So you've got a lot of choices in terms of HDR images that you can use in your projects. All right, so what I've done is I've gone to the Blender Cloud, and I downloaded one I want. So what I'm going to do is come over here to the World tab, and I'm going to click on Use Nodes. And then we can see we've got this environment texture that's been added here. Now, if you don't have an environment texture here, you can always click and choose it here. But that's what you want is that environment texture. Now you can click Open, and I'm going to browse to my textures 
And here is, no, that's the garage. This is the one I want. In fact, I think that's the one we were just looking at. I'm not sure. But anyway, this is the one I think I'm going to use. I'm going to go ahead and open this. And there we go. So now it's been placed in the scene so that it's going to give us reflections from the image. So we can begin to um, establish how metallic or how rough we want our image to be, our, our material to be. All right, so let's begin working on the specularity of one of the objects here. How about um, the actual lock down here? Let's go ahead and select this and zoom in. So we can see here that it's fairly dull and a matte material. Let's go over to our materials and let's maybe increase the metallic and reduce the roughness. Let's do that. I'll reduce the roughness, increase the metallic, and I'll also take down that specular sum just so we get more of the metallic. And you can see here as we get higher in the metallic, it begins to reflect the scene, the HDR in the scene. So let's actually, let's um, take this one and let's see if we can just make this reflect the scene here. I'm going to take the, the roughness down, the specular down, turn up the metallic, and there it is. So you can see how the image is being reflected in that material. And that's what we want, just to help get us closer to the kind of material that we want. All right, that's a little too much. <laughs> Let's bring that down, bring up the roughness. There we go. So we've got a little bit of reflection happening. Maybe a little bit more here. It is a metal case, I believe. So I'm going to give it a little bit more metallic. Let's see if we can give it a bit of, of roughness. Yeah, so something like that. Okay, so we have the lock and this piece fairly metallic. That's good. Now let's uh, select the top here. And I think what I want to do is maybe reduce the specularity of these. Let's, um, let's begin with uh, the base. That's fairly matte. I don't think we want it to shine quite that much. So I'm going to take the specular down. And since it isn't a metal material, I'm not going to increase the, the metallic. Take the roughness up just a little bit. Let's try that. Now let's work on the top. The top is seems to be a little bit more shiny than the base. So I'm going to reduce the specular just a bit. I don't want the roughness to be quite that. Something like this. Let's try that. Um, these pieces don't look too bad, actually. So let's just look at this one real quick. Um, let's look at the screen first, the actual box here. Um, I'm going to take the specular down. Um, I like the, the roughness up around there. There we go. Let's give let's give that a try. This here looks pretty good to me. I don't know that I want to mess with this too much. Maybe take the roughness down like this. Oh, that's the um, the image, which isn't bad. But let me do also do that for this as well. There we go. Um, I guess I could do that screen too. That screen image. Uh, let's take the specular down so it doesn't glare so much in the lights. There we go, okay. Uh, the paper, probably take the specular down quite a bit, leave the rough up. How about the keys now? Let's take a look at the keys. So let me select one of these and zoom in. So let's uh, deal with the keys white. How much do we want these to shine in the light here? Well, let's zoom in here. We can't really see too much here, although we can see a little bit of a highlight here. So let's try and pick up some of that. So let's take the roughness down a bit. And the specular we can keep fairly high, I guess. Something like that. So we're at 0.16 here. So um, I'll probably just need to copy. So let me keep this, the specular at point. Oops at 0.5 and um, the roughness let's 
try point two. There we go. So I kind of know what these are. Let's go point two here. Yeah, that's okay. Um, what else do we need? We need the red. Let's do point two here. Yeah. Let's do the gray. Point two there. And what else? What about these here? Let's do point two here as well. All right, let's go ahead and save, and then let's render this out. So if we go up here to render, we can choose render image and see how it looks. And there it is. Now, I don't want the background in here, so to do that, to get rid of the background, what let's do is come back to the render panel here, or excuse me, the scene panel, and under film, Let's change our alpha from sky to transparent. And now if we hit the F12 key, we get a render like that without the background. So we can then composite that or overlay that in Krita on an image. Now one thing I didn't do is deal with the actual feet here. Let's deal with this real quick. I don't think there's a whole lot that needs to happen with these but maybe they're rubber and uh, shouldn't be quite this shiny. So let's go back to materials and the feet. Let's take the, the specular down some, maybe like this, and the roughness up maybe just a little bit. So maybe it's something like that. And do we have that same material on all the feet? Yes, we do. Okay, so that's the feet. All right, I'm going to go ahead and turn this back to this view. And uh, let's try again. Let's hit F12 again. And here we are. All right, so that actually looks pretty good. And I think we'll be able to use that in the scene of the convenience store. And I think it'll work pretty well. Once I get it in the scene, though, I think I will go back and add uh, some cables coming out, maybe... Um, a cable going from here to the cash box and then also an electric cable going out of here and maybe into the counter that it's sitting on. So there we go, our cash register. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this Let's Create with Blender 2.8. Stay tuned for more. I've got lots more to do. Well, thanks for watching and take care.